Dear ladies and gentlemen, engineers and scientists, today we are going to investigate the motion in one, two, and three dimensions. When we are talking about motion, it, we are, can be talking about something very complicated, like the motion of the cat you see here. The legs or, and the tail and the head all move in different directions while the cat is hurling itself through the air. A simpler motion is the motion of this brick, which has been thrown a moment ago and is going to break a window in, in a moment later. Now, uh, in this uh, brick, the motion is that of a rigid body. The parts are relatively in constant place with respect to each other, but the motion is still complicated in the sense that the break is both tumbling and rolling and transversing uh, over the distance. The motion we are going to investigate is the motion of a single particle. This is the motion we are going to investigate. Motion is the change in position. So we need coordinates to define this motion. We are going to investigate the motion of this particle. Its current position is given by this vector r, uh, which denotes where it is in these coordinates. Since we are talking about motion, this r is changing in time. And a little bit ago, the particle was here. And it has moved over there. So the original vector was this. And the particle has moved from R0 to its new position, R. The change in position is the displacement. So we denote where R is the position at time t, R0 is the position at t equals 0, and displacement S is the change in position. When we are talking about displacement, it doesn't matter whether the particle has followed this red route or one of these green routes. It was originally here, now it is there, and its displacement in time t is this. Note that displacement can be zero even when there is, no, there is a, a lot of motion. I start from here, go around the table, come back to where I was, and my displacement is zero. The next concept we are going to look at is the average velocity. It is the ratio of displacement to the time it took for the displacement. And I add that to my formula. Average velocity is then the uh, displacement ratio of the displacement to time, and it is a vector quantity. Of course, the direction is same as the direction of the displacement. Now, average velocity is important in determining where the particle has gone, but it is of little relevance on what happens to it. For example, in that motion around that table, if I had bumped into the table somewhere along, then whether my leg got hurt or not would not depend on the average velocity, which was zero, but this velocity just before I hit the table and how much would hurt my leg. 
So we need another concept, that of instantaneous velocity. We define it as the displacement in a very short time delta t. Instantaneous velocity is the position or displacement at time t plus delta t minus the position or displacement at time t divided by delta t. Mathematicians will call this the derivative of s with respect to t. So I add this to my formula box. It is the derivative of displacement, which is same as the derivative of position, because this constant term here does not contribute to the derivative. The magnitude of velocity is known as speed and is denoted with a v without the hat. So velocity is v, a vector quantity, and speed as magnitude is, uh, without that vector sign, is a scalar quantity. When I say my velocity is 3 meters per second, it doesn't mean enough. It's, when I say my speed is 3 meters per second, that's, it describes my speed, but I should say my velocity is 3 meters per second in such and such direction. Next concept we are going to deal with is the concept of acceleration. That is, we are going to look at how the velocity changes. The average acceleration is defined as velocity at time t minus initial velocity divided by t. Average acceleration is velocity at time t minus the initial velocity divided by that time. Again, like the average velocity, this concept does not tell what the particle is doing at a given moment. For example, I am at rest here, my velocity is zero. I start moving and come to rest again. My velocity is again zero, but I have moved quite a bit. Now during this period, my average acceleration is final velocity minus initial velocity zero. Then if I did not accelerate, how did I, how come I came here? Well, of course, the acceleration was not zero during the thing. It, the average value was zero. So we need the concept of instantaneous acceleration. Instantaneous acceleration is defined as the small change in velocity that took place in uh, interval delta t divided by that delta t. Mathematicians say that this is dv by dt. So we put this in our formula box. Derivative of velocity with respect to time as the second derivative of displacement with respect to time, because velocity itself is the derivative of displacement. And of course, since position is and displacement differ just by a constant, we can also say it is the second derivative of position with respect to time. We can go the other way around too. If we start with acceleration, then we can find the velocity by integrating it. If acceleration is the derivative of velocity, then change in velocity over a time t is the integral of that. Please note that you should not confuse the integration variable and the integral limit. And this and this are the same, this and this are the same. If you use the same letter for all, probably nothing will happen in a physics course, but if you do it in a math course or math exam, uh, you might be struck by a lightning or uh, stones may fall on your head or something very nasty 
some very nasty consequence may happen. So you don't do that. Uh, the uh, integral limit is what relates to the velocity at the end and integration variable as all those times from t equals zero to this t. So this is the formula. I put that in my formula box. And as the velocity is the derivative of the displacement, then displacement is the integral of velocity. Please note that the integration variable and integral limit are different. Adding that to my box. We have seen general properties of motion in one, two, and three dimensions. Because these quantities are vector, they are valid in all three cases. Now we will look at into several special motions. The first of which is uniform motion. In uniform motion, velocity is constant. That is, both the magnitude and direction of the velocity are constant. Now, uh, this means acceleration, which is derivative of velocity, is zero as the derivative of a constant. Average velocity is the same as that constant velocity, and displacement is just v times t. So this is the simplest kind of motion that we can deal with. Our next example will be, next different motion type will be uniformly accelerated motion. In this motion, acceleration is not constant, but is not zero, but it is a constant. If acceleration is a constant, then average acceleration is the same as the acceleration at any time, and uh, velocity is given by v0 plus a t. The velocity at time t is just this, because the average acceleration is same as the acceleration here, and average acceleration times t is the change in velocity. Next, we'll look at displacement. Displacement is average velocity times time. To find the average velocity, I look at the how the velocity changes. Because the acceleration is uniform, the plot of velocity with respect to time is linear, and the average velocity is the average of initial and final velocities. Once we note that the average velocity is initial and average of initial and final velocities, we substitute it there, and uh, for the velocity at time t, we substitute from here, and we obtain v0t plus a t squared over 2, which is an important thing, and we add this to our formula book. So our formula book for the uniformly accelerated motion is for constant a, v is v0 plus a t, s is v0t plus a t squared over 2. We can obtain a third formula from here where we will represent acceleration and displacement in terms of initial and final velocities without time. To represent the uh, motion in terms of acceleration, displacement, and velocities without time, we take this formula displacement is average velocity times time, 
and multiply both sides by the acceleration. Please note that I am doing a scalar product here as vectors can be multiplied in two different ways. Here we have scalar product. Okay, the average velocity is v plus v0 over 2 and at as from here you can see that it is v minus v0. Substituting, I get this and here Note that VV0 terms cancel out V dot V0, and I am left with V dot V minus V0 dot V0. Please note that in scalar product, I have the magnitude of the two vectors times the cosine of the angle between. However, when I am taking the scalar product of a vector with itself, the angle between is zero and its cosine is one. So V dot V is V square and V zero dot V zero is V zero square. Now I can write this in my formula book too. Please note that uh, velocity and acceleration need not be in the same direction. A typical example where they are not in the same direction is the famous Eik uh, Atish or a ballistic motion that you have been studying last five years or so. This is a scene from the uh, games in World Cup. This is the goalie uh, doing the goal kick and uh, the ball is flying off in a parabolic motion. Don't believe that it is parabolic actually. The, in physics one, we neglect air friction. So we can assume it is parabolic. And it moves around in this. And at this point, its velocity is here. At this point, it's velocity there, and if we draw these two vectors, we see difference between initial and final velocities is the uh, acceleration times time. Of course, in this motion, uh, again, neglecting air friction, acceleration is the gravitational acceleration g in the uh, minus y direction. So uh, uniformly accelerated motion as valid in one, two, three dimensions. Okay, uh, in the next lecture, we will look at two different motions, uniform circular motion and finally relative motion.